I'm Ian Farrow. I'm a lecturer in the aerospace department at Bristol University. My area is aircraft structural design. We get students to apply their analytical methods, simplified for design, and then actually build in this lab where they get their hands dirty really and start to make the items they've designed. So previously we'd, we'd used uh, uh, 3D printing to print directly uh, the, the socket and shell and also uh, moulding uh, which involved creation of mould tools uh, beforehand. And these methods were cumbersome and, and time intensive uh, compared to what we can do now in literally seconds in the, in the making. It gives us sort of excitement, if you like, of, of, of a rapid manufacturing technique to produce the final article in, in one shot. Uh, and uh, you can make many more iterations much more quickly and learn much more rapidly to improve and develop your designs. I run projects where students play with new materials really. There's one material called an exotic material, uh, a type of material, uh, which has a negative Poisson's ratio. If you can imagine a piece of rubber and you stretch it, it would get thinner as you stretch it. In comparison to that, an exotic material, when you stretch it, would say get fatter or do nothing at all. So the idea with these materials is that they could be particularly useful for things like prosthetics, um, human supports of various kinds, because they would tend to fit the body shape better and give better comfort. Uh, the project which I've run recently um, was taken on by Nikki, one of our, our undergraduate students, who did an excellent job and uh, created uh, various uh, um, examples of oxetic plastics using the, the Meku pressure former. And before this, we'd had to uh, use other methods which were far less convenient to us. So it's opened up a whole new sort of manufacturing sort of route for us and enabled us to do much more rapid trials and, and, and advance our ideas on that. Lots of people now jump straight to 3D printing so it's very easy to click play, put it on, and the thing that you want pops out. But um, it's not necessarily like a good design or efficient or like strong in the right directions and things like that. So it might be that they print it to get a feel for the part and look at it, but then they might be able to get a better quality part by going the extra mile and designing a mould. One project on the thermoformers that's been used was a shimpan project where the student 3D scanned their leg and then formed the plastic sheets on, onto that mould of their leg, so it's sort of like a custom pad. When you go and look in like literature, thermoforming and 3D printing are very rarely compared especially not in the sense of impact testing. So it's quite a niche, niche area to look at, which I, I found quite fun. The machine itself, the multiplier, it does sort of feel like you've got like a little mini factory pretty much. It was really quite consistent as well, which is obviously exactly what you need when you're doing academic testing, because you need to have these things controlled. Having something like the Meku pressure form of available to us. The students get exposed to these new methods uh, which then fire their ideas in terms of what they can do uh, uh, and uh, enable many more derivatives of the ideas that they might initially come up with. So one of the projects which we've done recently has been looking at lower limb prosthetic socket. The idea I had was to have a, a suspended uh, tailored socket within the outer shell which would be designed and created to to show up exotic properties um, and hence improve comfort. Actually, the tooling for the prosthetic, lower limb prosthetic socket project, as well as it being a simplified version of what a socket would be in, in reasonable sort of dimensions, it provides a really challenging sort of mould that we can use in the pressure former to really push it to its limits. Because if it can form that amount of draw uh, over that sort of complexity of tooling, it opens up you know, everything up to that point. You would literally spend days and weeks uh, waiting to, to be able to do one iteration, um, whereas now we can do several iterations in one day, potentially. The capability of manufacture we have now with the Make It Pressure Former has opened some sort of new doors to us that we, you know, in terms of uh, configurations uh, of, of material, that would have been very difficult and hard to imagine doing any other way.